Bluetooth is an amazing technology that allows us to wirelessly communicate with devices. Bluetooth has been around for a long time, but since the introduction of Bluetooth Low Energy, we've seen a massive rise in the number of Bluetooth devices around us, everything from headphones to heart rate monitors. BLE is cheap and consumes very little power, which makes it great for mobile devices. Soon, everything from parking meters to vending machines will have a BLE chip inside. But there is one common problem. To interact with any of these devices, users need to install a native app. An app for the San Francisco parking meter, an app for the Palo Alto parking meter, an app for the Mountain View parking meter. Each app adds massive amounts of friction for users that just want to interact with the device in front of them. Soon, the number of apps in your cell phones will become unmanageable. More importantly, why should you download an app for things that you're going to use once or twice? Wouldn't it be great if all of this just worked directly from a web page? My name is Giovanni, and I'm an engineer on the Chrome team, and I'm here today to talk to you about Bluetooth on the web and how the web Bluetooth API that we're implementing in Chrome, with, combined with the physical web, will change the way you interact with the devices around you. Let's take a step back for a moment and talk about the physical web. The physical web is an early stage experimental project that allows users to discover devices around them. Using BLE, objects can broadcast a URL that the physical web picks up and presents to the user. For example, a movie poster can broadcast a link to the movie trailer, or a parking meter can broadcast a link to a website where you can pay for parking. In a way, the physical web concept is similar to that of QR codes, but the physical web offers some key advantages. First, the physical web will eventually be part of your smartphone, so there is no need for users to download an app. Furthermore, the physical web is more convenient. Users shouldn't need to climb on a ladder to snap a QR code on their smoke detector. With the physical web, you can seamlessly discover devices and objects around you. But the question remains, how do you connect with them? This is where Web Bluetooth comes in. Web Bluetooth will allow users to seamlessly connect to the devices around them without the need to install an app, and will enable developers to build cross-platform web apps. For example, a user would be able to walk up to any parking meter in any city and then use the physical web to navigate to the corresponding web app. Once a user pays for parking, the websites can then notify the parking meter directly using BLE. The same concept can be applied to many devices where power consumption is an issue and internet connectivity is not viable. We are currently working on the API to make all of this available to developers. But we sh before we show you how the current a proposed API works, let's review some BLE concepts. A characteristic contains a value, a descriptor, and a descriptor and descriptors that describe that value. You can think of a characteristic as a type, analogous to a class. Services. A service is just a collection of characteristics. For example, a heart rate monitor has a heart rate service. The heart rate service contains a characteristic called heart rate measurement, which holds the value of the user's heart rate. A website could then connect to the device to read and write to characteristics or subscribe to notifications from characteristics. It's pretty simple. The developer will request access to a device filtered by service, in this case, heart rate. The system will then ask the user to confirm that they want the web app to pair with the device. Once the user has granted access, the, the developer will then be able to get direct access to the service on the device, which means that now you can get access to the service's characteristics, which in this case would let you read the heart rate from the device. And it's a very similar process for writing data to a Bluetooth device. You get access to the device, to the service, and the characteristic, and then you call it write value. It's really that simple. A slight more enhanced use case is the ability to be notified when data on a characteristic changes. For example, the heart rate measurement characteristic allows you to subscribe to notifications. Now, every time the heart rate changes, the website updates the value shown to the user. Now that you've seen what the API looks like, you probably want to get your hands on it. While we work on finishing up the API and integrating it into Chrome, we have built a Chrome Apps polyfill that you can use to try out the API. You can, embed the you can embed the polyfill in a Chrome app and use it in a Chromebook to scan for devices, connect to them, read and write characteristics, and subscribe to notifications in the same way you 
would using the Web Bluetooth API. Don't have a BLE peripheral available? Fret not. We have built an Android app that lets you simulate a BLE peripheral with services and characteristics that you can read, write, or get notifications from. By using both, we are sure you will be able to try out the Web Bluetooth API. Today, we have given you a quick glimpse into what we're enabling on the web. You can find out more about how to play with it at this URL. We look forward to getting your feedback on the API specification in the W3C group and learning about your use cases. Thanks for watching and remember, stay connected. <laughs>